the number one question I'm asked is how do I minister to the LGBTQ friends and loved ones? Here's two talks that explain that perfectly. This is all found in our official church app, comeuntochrist.org, or in the Gospel Library. When you focus on the one, you can really lift and strengthen. I have had the opportunity to visit different areas of the world, and we have attended church in many different wards and branches. And until you've seen people that are different than you, in lots of different ways, I think it's easy to get focused on a very narrow segment and feel like that's the only way to be. I think when we get outside ourselves, when we consider others, it helps us realize that we are all a family, our family of Heavenly Father. Someone might say, well, I don't have a need for other people, but maybe they have a need for you. When you choose to put yourself out there, you are blessing someone else's life. I think one of the things that we can do is to focus on the one. Can you find one person that looks like they would love to visit or that they need someone to listen to them? Can you look for the person who is sitting on the outside, sitting on the fringe? That gives me a purpose. That gives us a purpose. When we feel not so comfortable with large groups, but we just focus on the one. One of the best ways to form a good relationship is not to come into assumptions or preconceived notions. Keeping an open mind, an open heart, sometimes we tend to pigeonhole people or we assume that they are a certain way because of a certain situation in their life or in their family. And it's always surprising if you keep your mind open and your heart open, you find out lots of wonderful things about people you may have not had ever expected. When you experienced, when you've seen, when you've opened your heart to other people, you see that we all belong to a loving Heavenly Father. This is a talk that was given by Sister Jean B. Bingham. Focus on the one. Foster relationships with Christ. It's important for every individual to have a relationship with Christ because salvation is a personal, individual experience. We do not save people by congregations. We are ourselves saved, one individual at a time. This is a very personal relationship with Christ. The Savior understands us because he is not an abstraction, because he's a living, breathing, real Son of God, the living Son of the living God. People who think that they have sinned too much or gone too far or been away for too long and somehow can't come back into the circle. My declaration is no one can fall lower than the light of Christ shines. That is impossible. I think coming to participate in the sacrament, the Lord's Supper weekly, that we can show that we want to identify with him that in fact there will be a reciprocal gift and power that comes back from that. As we come to participate and be solidly with the Savior in that act, that solidity and engagement comes back to us. And we leave that congregation, we leave that meeting with the strength and a power and an understanding from Him that we didn't have before. Part of it is because we understand him better, but clearly it represents the fact that he understands us. My personal experience, as well as my apostolic calling, is to declare personally that Christ does know us. He has walked a thorn, difficulty, rock-strewn path, lives. How he did that, I don't know. 
I don't know. He didn't have a divorce. So you could say, well, how does he know about me? I don't know how he does that. But if somebody out there has had a divorce, he, he understands. This sounds awkward to say, but God loves me in a sense almost as much as he loved his only begotten son. At least I can say this. He gave his only begotten son for me, for us, and that says something about our worthiness in his eyes and in the eyes of the Savior and his willingness to go to Gethsemane and Calvary for all of us. I'll never have to do that. I don't have to bleed. I don't have to die for somebody else's sins. And I don't have to be that lonely. But I understand it. And I love it. And I appreciate it. And what it means to me is that he understands me, all of us, that he loves us, and that he reaches us. So I can't explain how this happens. I just know that it does. That's Jeffrey R. Holland. The Savior understands me.